Okay, let's look at this integrated rate law problem. So whenever a question is asking how long something is going to take, then the variable you're looking for is t. So in these kinetics problems, to determine which, react, which equation you're going to use, because now you have a lot of equations. You have the equation for rate, which is the change in concentration over the change in time. You have the equation for the rate law, and you have a zero order rate law, a first order rate law, and a second order rate law. And you also have equations for integrated rate laws, which are uh, first zero order integrated rate law, first order integrated rate law, so on and so on. So remember, um, if, you, if you don't remember what I'm talking about, I'm referring to all the equations that are on this table here. So we have equations that are for rate laws, zero, first, and second order equations. We have integrated rate laws, a zero, first, and second order integrated rate law. We have half-life expressions, a zero, first, and second order half-life expression. And all these equations are different. And you don't have to memorize all of them to do well in this chapter, but you do have to know which one to use at the right time. So look at this question. It says the rate constant, so we have k. So let's figure out uh, what information we're given. k equals this. 400 degrees C, we have temperature, capital T. How long, it's asking us for t, we don't know lowercase t. In seconds, would it take for the concentration of A to decrease from this to this? So the concentration of A initial equals this, and this equals the concentration of A final, or at time t, right, at any time. So these are the variables that are given in this problem. In order to know what equation I should use, I should make sure that I know which variables I have, and then I should come and look at the equations to see which equations have these variables. So uh, the only equation that has t, which is what I'm trying to solve for, the rate laws don't have a t, a little t, right? There's no little t in the rate law. There is no little t in the half-life expression. There's a t one half, how long it takes for half, but there's not a little t. So when I'm solving for t one half, I should use these expressions. But when I'm solving for little t, these are the only set of equations that have time as a variable. So I know that I'm either using a zero order, or a first order, or a second order integrated rate law if the question is asking me how much time has passed. So let's go back to the question here. This says, how long in seconds would it take for the concentration of A to decrease from this to this? And this is the rate constant for a first order reaction. So it tells us right here, this is a first order reaction. So a first order reaction, according to my table, first order reaction has a rate law that looks like this. The units of the rate constant are per second. The integrated rate law, we can, have, we can use either of these forms. I like to use the form in, in the form of a line, y equals mx plus b. So this is my integrated rate law. Natural log of a at time t equals negative k times t plus natural log of a at sub zero. So that's the equation that we need to use. And I know that because it's asking me how much time has passed, and they told me it's a first order reaction. And after I label all of the variables that I'm given in this reaction, or in this problem, I would just look up on my sheet of equations which one fits all this information. So let's write down our first order integrated rate law. Natural log of A at time t equals negative kt plus natural log of a sub zero at time zero, the initial, uh, the initial concentration. So I know that the concentration at time t is my final concentration. And I know k is this 0.68 zero per second. 
t is what I'm trying to solve for. All right, so then we plug in a sub zero, natural log of a sub zero from our initial concentration. So now we have to isolate t. We're just going to do some algebra here. We're going to isolate t. And so if I have plus ln 0.94, then I should move it by subtracting that. So if I subtract that from both sides, 0.940m, then it gets canceled from this side. And I move it over to the other side. And remember, a, prom a property of logarithms says that I can uh, natural log of A minus natural log of B is equal to the natural log of A divided by B. Those are equal to each other when I'm talking about logarithms, right? So then if I take the natural log of A Come on, buddy. So if I take the natural log of A divided by B, that's equal to zero. 0 0.680 per second times t. Okay, so getting closer. Now I just have to divide both sides by t. Now I just have to divide both sides by negative k. And then we've solved for t. We've got t all by itself. So in order to solve for t, now I have to do this arithmetic. So natural log of 0 0.220 divided by 0 0.94. 220 divided by 0 0.94. Natural log divided by 0.68, negative 0.68 equals t equals 2.1356 and what are the units here so i had molar over molar so molar and molar cancel and then on the bottom i had per second so if this was the denominator of the denominator remember it really sits up in the numerator so it really becomes seconds so time is 2.1356 seconds, or if I account for my sig figs here, I have uh, three sig figs. So the time is 2.14 seconds.